Alright, what is going guys? My name is Bryce and today we're going to start working on the Bluetooth speaker Mark II. Just before we start this video, I'd just like to make sure that you guys note that I am sorry about any audio glitches that happened uh, during the recording of the Fusion 360 part of this video. Uh, the microphone bugged out and the gain went up, um, making it so that the, uh, the, the audio is a little bit out. I'm sorry for that and I have fixed that for the next video. Alright guys, let's get into it. Um, so today for the Bluetooth, the new Bluetooth speaker, um, we're going to sort of start the, the, the process um, and we're going to sort of start building the casing for this speaker but we're not going to start making any large or major components for it. Um, so this sort of uh, Bluetooth speaker series I'm sort of going to break it up into like sort of smaller um, smaller design videos and then a final um, a final showcase sort of video at the end which I'm working on for the uh, for the main speaker I do apologize if you can hear guinea pigs drinking behind me they are a little loud um, but today we are going to design um, a placeholder part for this and if you guys remember my update video we've got my cordless drill here and we've got a battery pack this is the battery pack that I want to design this speaker around is I want to be able to make something where I can slip this into the bottom it connects and it's got a positive negative on here you guys probably can't I need little dots there positive negative I just want to be able to make something that that slips into um, the drills they only have two fangs or two pins I guess you would say that slip into it so I want to design something that I can take this and this will be like the weighty part it is going to be sort of the part that holds it down um, I'm designing it I want to design it for this big big um, this big uh, actual battery pack but I'll probably end up using my smaller one with it but at the same time I still want the flexibility to be able to use this now this is a Triton battery pack for Triton um, for, for Triton tools but um, again like all the files at the end of this will be made available so people can make small modifications to be able to make um, make whatever battery packs they have fit um, most battery packs are pretty much the same size so you guys might just have to change the uh, the location of the positive negative pins or something or modify it a little bit to change where the, um, the little receiver is going to go um, I do have a couple of these uh, these little metal um, well, these little pin receivers um, in the on the way but I do actually have another drill that's in bits because it broke um, so I'm going to use that bit, but I'm not going to um, incorporate that into today's video. Um, so this one, I'm going to aim to try and keep it a little bit more on the um, more on the the shorter side of things, just so that we can sort of uh, sort of just get things sort of rolling, um, get the development or the designing of this rolling. So this is my my Bluetooth um, button control module or board. It's not overly sophisticated it's got a bunch of uh, a bunch of tech switches um, and then just pins out to a, a bunch of pins at the bottom um, so this is this one's pretty straightforward but I didn't do it right on the green one so um, I'm, I'm gonna remodel this in because this was sort of a last sort of thought thing so we're gonna we're gonna remodel this into a into our Fusion 360 here so that when we design this speaker we can design something around it. Um, good old verni uh, verniers or digital calipers are very handy. Mine are kind of busted. Um, but we're going to first start measuring because I, I completely forgot what size I made this. So it's 18.75 so we'll start and we'll just do a basic sketch uh, on top so it's 18.75 by how long 
is my problem with these ones is they uh, they reset. So let's see, it's not actually 18.75. I gotta not read the uh, read the digital screen. It's 45.13. So we did that, um, and then the lengthways is 65.35. So I'm probably just going to go 65.5. Oh, no. By uh, 65.5. Now I'll do this because. Um, although the the actual board might be a little bit smaller, it's better off to sort of get it sort of with a little bit of leeway because when the part's printed, it might not fit right. So it might fit a little bit off. Uh, so we're going to sort of give it a little bit of extra leeway. Um, so now we've got that, we want our holes. Now I do believe our holes are three millimeters in from three mil uh, corners. Uh, so... I've got to get used to moving. Um, we're going to go uh, press C for circle. On the main line here, we're going to go 3 millimeters. Um, and then we're going to press D for dimension. And it's going to be 3 millimeters from the top. And it should be, because it's on this line, it should automatically be somewhere around 3 ish. Maybe not. Oh, wait, no. Alright, so. We are going to remove it. We don't want it on that constraint of this line. Infusion doesn't want to delete it. Okay. And Fusion, for some reason, doesn't like making circles with no detail. Alright, so this can be three. And it can be three from the top. There we go. So we've got our, our holes. And a good, good practice when you design parts is always to sort of make something, you know, um, I don't know what you'd really call it, like, um, not like uniform, but like, you know, have like a sort of standard um, sort of layout. So all my holes are exactly 3mm um, center point from the sides. I do that in almost, almost every single part I, I design. Um, just because it's a nice even number, but it's also very easy to, uh, to to design and remember. So we now have our mounting holes. Now I'm not going to do anything massive or drastic to do with these these tack switches. But what I am going to do is for a start, I want to I want to because this is just a placeholder part. Okay, so this is going to be used to be able to cut out a hollow out an area for. Uh, in in the actual part, or whether or not we put it on the um, we put it on the the outside of the case, or we put it on the inside of the case, I'm probably going to put it on the uh, on the outside just because it's easy, um, and this thing doesn't get damaged anyway. Um, it's it's like a piece of it's just a PCB with a couple of tack switches on it. It's not like it's a a component that's going to die if it gets a little bit of water or something on it. It's just a couple of tack switches. So what we're going to do is we're going to, I want to measure somewhat around the size of these tack switches, which I believe is roughly 6 by 6, which it is. It's about 6.5 by 6.5, but that that's just the tack switch. That's not including the leads on the side. So I'm going to make it maybe, uh, let's do an 8 by 8. Um, little sort of cube nub, um, so that way when we uh, cut it out, um, we can actually do something. Now, why is fusions getting confused? It's halting. Uh, so we're gonna do eight by eight. Um, now we also want to get sort of give or take the uh, the sort of distance. So. For the very far side, 
Let's go about 16.5 millimeters from here to here. So it's 16.5. And from top to bottom, we're looking at about 9.5. When I designed this uh, this PCB, I do believe I just sort of slapped all the uh, the tack switches in somewhat of a neat arrangement. Um, so we are now going to can I copy and paste? No, it's not going to let me. And for some reason, I, I I wish you could maybe you can let me guys let me know if you guys know. But can you change the uh, the the shortcut um, letters for what it actually calls because when I, I always use center point rectangles and you cannot uh, you can't bring that up um, straight away when uh, when you press R it goes to two point and I hate two point um, okay so this is gonna be 9.5 and between the two of them we're gonna go somewhere around the uh, 13 millimeters Um, which I do believe it is slightly lopsided because this to here yeah is 20 it actually should be 17 so let's let's remove that constraint we'll do this one Which was 17. There we go. Alright, so I'm going to quickly go through and do the rest of these and then I'll be back with you guys in a second. So we now have our little board sort of basically laid out um, to the same as what the uh, this board is laid out to. Um, now, how thick is this board? I believe it was roughly 2 mil. 1.5, or 1.65. Uh, so we all just take that and we're going to extrude to 1.65. Then we're going to turn our sketch back on, and then we're going to extrude our little nubs. Um, we're going to extrude these. We're going to do eight mil, just so it's sort of, you know, sort of representative of what it actually is. Um, and then we've also got the little cutout, which I'm going to use as the uh, where the wires are going to go. Um, this is not designed for putting a header on. It's designed for you to wire in. Um, a bunch of wires in the bottom of it and then branch them off to the amp board to break off the uh, the signals um, although yeah like uh, with, the, with the layout of this as well I need to change it um, one of the buttons needs to be sort of switched around volume and volume plus and volume minus need to be on the opposite sides um, I'm sorry if I keep on clipping too I'm actually turning the the gain down and it's not not really helping so uh I'll turn that down alright so we've now done that um and we'll save that as the button board placeholder 
Um, and now for this, uh, I'm gonna quickly do it. It, um, it is, I'll speed through this, but it's practically a very similar thing. We're just gonna make a box um, at this point in time, and then I'll probably just make a little sort of, I don't know, whatever that thing is. Um, and then that should be it. This is pretty straightforward. I'm gonna sort of do a basic sort of size. Um, now, unfortunately, because there is a battery indicator level on the back, um, when we put it in, we won't be able to reach that, so it's going to be a bit, a bit painful, but at the end of the day, it's not the end of the world that you can't see the battery level, because you can just take the battery out and press it, and it will work. Uh, so, let's get back into that. Uh, it's pretty straightforward as well, so um, for a start, let's just quickly turn that sketch off um, and save it. Alright, so we're going to get our rectangle, um, this is roughly how wide, it's around 79mm uh, wide. millimeters wide, and the deepest part is roughly 113.7 so we do 114 millimeters 114 millimeters all right so that's our basic block really um, we don't really need to, to model much of the detail into this part because all we're doing is we're just going to make sure that the hole for this for this battery is going to be big enough that it can fit in so um, the 79 parts actually in this little sort of larger ribbed area so when we when we put this into the actual uh, the model we will make a hole that that fits this part although it won't look like all fancy and it won't have anything it's just, it's just gonna be a hole to fill the part so we don't need to add too much detail into it um, but we are gonna have to add that little uh, that little uh, profile there so how tall is the part now we're gonna bring it up to as tall as the main part of the body which is 55.8 so we'll do 56 just to be safe um, sometimes when doing this is my especially when the tolerance is not too bad um, it, it's a little bit better to maybe actually give it a little bit extra just so that when you assemble the parts um, they'll sort of fit together nicely um, and now now that we've actually got this um, it's a little bit harder to sort of uh, maybe maybe like visualize how this is going to work but we want to make this little chamfered bit up here we need to model that in so that we know where it is um, so we're going to start another sketch on the front of it now we need to know how far um, from here does it go. Now I don't want to stick the, the end of the vernier caliper into the uh, in, into one of the battery terminals. So we'll just I'm just going to eyeball this just to, um, to demonstrate, but it's pretty accurate. So we're at 31.26 so I'm gonna say maybe 31.5 so that's how far we're in and it goes up um, and it goes up to how much how thick is this part it is 10.77 so we'll just do 11 millimeters up and all right, so we also we we're gonna have to model in the latch part, but I'll probably do that later off camera because um, that might be a bit tedious. Um, but we're gonna extend it back. Uh, so we're looking at roughly 54 millimeters back. Um, 
Now, there is a ridge that goes, there's this, uh, this sort of chamfered edge where it's sort of angled, so we're gonna quickly model that in as well, just so that we know. Um, and from the edge of the corner of that to the corner of the part, or that front lip, we're looking at 50 millimeters. So I'm gonna make another line at the bottom here, make it 50, and then we can make a line like that, so that we now know that's where the chamfer is gonna go. Um, and I'll, I will, just quickly add in this extra bulky part. Um, it does, oh, maybe not. Okay, so I'll leave that out for now. Um, we've got the main part. Um, this profile will, uh, that needs to go across. Right, so with, with doing something like this, I find that extruding it up to where we need to go and then cutting back away from the side. Um, so this needs to be centered. Uh, so, but it actually needs to be, it needs to be 46.58, uh, and if we take however wide our part was originally, which I can't see, we'll, just, just for demonstration purposes, we'll eyeball this. So, we're going off, we want to go off the wide ribbed part, just so we know, uh, 13.2 ish off the side uh, so we'll extrude that how wide is this part let's double check that just so we know it was 79 millimeters okay Turn our body back on. We extrude this. And we need to take off 13.2 ish. So I'm going to say maybe it, it, it's probably somewhere around um, probably around the, the 13. But I'll do 13.5 to make it, you know, make this actual sort of part a little bit smaller um, for us to use. Uh, so we want to do negative. 79 minus uh, 13. Oh, no, we want to add 13, sorry. Plus 13. Alright, so that's going to give us our 13 millimeter difference. Um, we're going to join the parts. And then we're going to open that sketch up again. Uh, we're going to open it. We're going to go here, we're going to go extrude. Uh, actually, we're not going to open it. We're going to stop sketching. Click on the, the face and go extrude. And we're going to negative 13. Okay. Now, because we know that's that's our, our angled edge. So we're going to turn that off. We're going to go to the right side. And then we're going to quickly model in the uh, the, the T-shape. Um, so the widest part is 46.65. Which should be the top, which is not. It should be between that and that. So it's 46.5. Right, so we need to change this a little bit. So our extrusion's a little bit off, which is fine, which normally happens. Um, all right, so we want the middle. Oh, what is it? it was 46.6, so we're going to do, what's that, 23.3? And then we'll do it another one over here, which is 23.3, which is our top lip. This is 2.6 millimeters thick. So we're going to line 2.6 at 90 degrees. Oh. Uh, and then this inner part is 
radius of 40 millimeters. So that's pretty straightforward. We can go from our, our middle, we can go 20 millimeters each side. And we can, so, so we now, we've now got that. Uh, so this can come down to the bottom. And then there we go. All right, so we now have our, our uh, sort of profile that we need to cut out. So we can extrude that. But we don't wanna actually, before we do that, we don't wanna actually cut away the extruded part or the uh, that part. We wanna do this and then we wanna cut away that. So we now have our profile of the, um, now have our profile uh, right there. Um, I'm not gonna bother modeling in the positive and negative terminals because they will move. Um, apart from that, we are done for today. I know it's a bit of a long video and these will go sort of longish. Um, but hopefully you guys learnt a little bit of uh, just sort of basic modeling. Um, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, to model mock parts, but once we start getting into the actual uh, main speaker construction, it might get a little bit messy. Um, we'll try and sort of, I'll try and make sure that you guys see everything as much as possible. But uh, make sure you guys like and subscribe. Uh, the support has been great lately. Um, make sure you guys uh, keep creating more, and I'll uh, catch you guys later. Peace.